What's up patrons, Headphones Neil here with a initial thoughts review on the OnePlus 9 Pro. So as in a bit of background, I had recent or at the beginning of April I had installed Lineage OS 18.1 on my OnePlus 8 Pro and overall it was a good experience. Um, it had minor quirks and downsides. For being an initial build it was pretty good but it had issues like um, not being able to install a touch with recovery port, which is current or which at the time is not available for the 8 Pro, um, so I couldn't get um, things like uh, Google Pay to work. Um, the automatic brightness would randomly not work. It, the screen would, like, for example, go all the way dim, and I'd have to toggle the automatic brightness to get it reset or reboot the device. So overall, it was. For the most part, it was a good experience as far as speed and performance. Uh, not having all the extra OnePlus um, features was a good and bad thing. So things like um, various um, system UI elements and um, notification drawer changes and things like that. Not having that was a general positive. Um, the downsides were things like not having motion graphics smoothing. Uh, the built-in camera app for better pictures to use the full features of the OnePlus camera. So it has its ups and downs, but overall I'd probably give it a grade of about a B. So further future builds would have made, I'm sure, improved it and finding a good camera app would have ultimately made it better. But once the 9 Pro came out, I, was, I got to thinking, well, I can get a decent amount as a trade-in. It looks like a decent upgrade, so... Um, I figured I would um, pick up the OnePlus 9 Pro, see how it is, and um, take it from there and also have the benefit of one more year of um, 5G rollout, um, slightly improved hardware and things like that. So overall, using the OnePlus 9 Pro now for a couple of weeks, I want to say that if you're coming from the 8 Pro, um, you're not going to find that it has a lot of improvements. It's basically just an incremental upgrade. So the Snapdragon processor is a minor upgrade to the 888. I forget offhand what the OnePlus 8 Pro has. Um, camera has a minor upgrade as far as um, features like the aperture and lens. Um, the wide angle lens I think was bumped from a 48 megapixel up to a 50 megapixel. But for the most part they're generally equivalent. Um, the main um, difference here on the camera side is that they now have um, or they made a camera lens um, improvements and modifications with Hasselblad or Hasselblad, the camera manufacturer. I'm sure I'm sure I'm saying that name wrong, but basically they're a known name in the camera industry. So um, that's the main main draw in this particular instance. Um, otherwise, the storage configurations remain about the same. Um, for example, you can max out at 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Um, and I think there's an 8 gig and 128 gig model and things like that. So um, that's about the same. Screen size is about the same. I think it was a like point something inch smaller for the 9 Pro. So not a um, major difference. Um, Oh yeah, now, as far as the cameras, they add an extra lens, so I think they, I forgot which part of the camera they improved there, but basically um, improvements for the wide angle lens, uh, near focus, it adds a tilt shift mode, um, and, and a couple of modifications like that. Um, but as far as other um, improvements, that's really the bulk of it. So like I said, if you're coming from the 8 Pro, you're, it's not going to be a big enough reason to make that jump unless you're a fan of the Hasselblad camera lens technology, then um, that might be something you can that you might be able to get behind. So um, there's that. But if you're coming from a prior OnePlus model or another phone that doesn't have quite the same specs, so if you're coming from a OnePlus 7T or 6T or like for example for me prior to the 8 Pro I had the OnePlus 5T so um, coming from any other model like that prior to the 8 Pro or even the 8 would make this a worthy upgrade for the specs so depending on how much money you want to spend the 8 Pro or the 9 Pro are both good cameras but if you're going or both good phones but if you're going for the latest and greatest upgrade for the longest longevity then the 9 Pro is a worthy upgrade um, 
so as I mentioned a couple weeks into it overall performance is good speed is good um, I want to say that performance has been normalized between from the 8 Pro to the 9 Pro so using the 8 Pro you can or coming or because it's a new, or I want to say with the caveat that because it's a new phone I want to say that that's probably why it feels um, a little bit more smooth and snappy but on both devices using Android 11 the 9 Pro feels a little bit more snappy and streamlined versus the 8 Pro so um, it might just be that um, the 8 Pro needs another update for back end performance updates and things like that but overall I want to say that I'm generally impressed with the 9 Pro there's not much change like I said from the 8 Pro so the, I'm not necessarily disappointed in the upgrade but if you're depending on what you're coming from um, specs really matter so for example if you're coming from a, a Samsung Galaxy S line phone then basically if you're coming from a 2020 model to tw this 2021 model then it's not really worth the upgrade but if you're coming from anything older um, prior to that or if you're coming from for example a mid-range phone to this phone then it is worth the upgrade you'll see a lot of good um, features and um, abilities so the one thing I'm still testing is the camera I've taken a couple of pictures and I want to say that overall they do look um, pretty good um, the smoothness colors and all of that seem to be a lot more even and are easier to take versus the 8 Pro and the 5T so I am like I said I'm still testing that but I want to say that it's um, pretty good so I'll have a sample picture in the um, post so that you can check out what a sample picture looks like um, but I am impressed with what they did with this camera just because it feels like the colors are more normalized but it will require taking a few more pictures over time in different scenarios and of different things to see how it holds up over time um, but initial impressions compared to the 8 Pro from last year it, it didn't seem like while the colors were good it's still on the 8 Pro and the photography was good camera was good but was more nuanced relative really compared to prior models it was about the same where you did have to pick your shot and focus and do a lot more manual stuff in this case a few times a few pictures that I have taken um, it was a lot easier to just take point the camera at something and take the picture and have the colors come out um, level and normal and good and generally and most pretty much in focus so um, I'll be testing that in the coming months just to see how it holds up and um, see how that goes so as far as summary for the phone I'd probably give it a grade of about a B plus to an A minus um, overall is good performance is good camera is good upgrading from an 8 Pro or an 8 is a minor upgrade but coming from, a, like I said to summarize, um, coming from a mid-range phone or a 2020 phone or B4 or prior would make it a def it would make it definitely a good upgrade. Um, I'm tr and as far as um, general home screen UI, I'm currently testing or trying to use the shelf a little bit more with the swipe down versus swipe from left like they've been doing. Um, I would ideally prefer to have the swipe from left so I can keep the notification drawer because I don't use the Google Discover feed but I've set up a custom widget a KWGT to have my notifications on my home screen so I can touch them from there or open them from there and use the shelf for thing for um, the weather and weather forecast so um, getting used to that is going to require a little bit of time I think I've tr I tried it before but never really got into it so I'm giving it another shot um, but those customizations are pretty good the oneplus shelf has always been something that's generally just work um, a comparable launcher that has a shelf would be action launcher which used to work but i don't know if it has an incompatibility with oneplus or just less time has been spent on it so the history of it's just been that we just generally didn't work as well for me or in the recent years the widget drawer hasn't really worked well for me um, from Action Launcher 2 and early versions of Action Launcher 3 it did work well but so I'm not sure what changed so I'm gonna chalk it up to maybe 
um, coding or maybe incompatibility with the with OnePlus devices. And then the app itself has got or the launcher itself has gotten a bit heavy, so resources weird. And the customizations need, for me as a side micro review need to be simplified a little bit because they feel like they're all over the place. So. Um, that's neither here nor there. So I'm basically back to using the OnePlus launcher and the shelf by using by the swipe down and using KWGT to have my notifications on the home screen. So I'll have a sample screenshot of that in the show notes as well, so you guys can see what um, I'm looking or what my home screen layout looks like as of this recording. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any um, questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, or um, want to um, give your feedback you can find me on twitter at patel n01 if you want to help support the show get access to early content and things like that you can visit the patreon at patreon.com slash patel n01 and of course the website is headphonesdeal.reviews for all subscription links supporting the show links to past episodes and all of that good stuff and then i'll probably do a roundup review which i've been talking about for a while with the one plus now so now instead of lineage os 18.1 i'm going to do a follow-up review for the uh one plus nine pro i'm um, using kabuntu for a few months and then star wars the old republic um so if you're a patron you already heard about this on the recent april bonus recap episode but um if you are subscribed to the youtube channel you see that i've i'm still playing star wars the old republic um so a video for that will be up shortly, um, but I've also started replaying Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 1 on the news that um, there may be a remake in the works or coming soon, so I wanted to play the vanilla version and try to finally get Revan's robes. I don't remember that I got them before. Um, I might have gotten them maybe with a cheat code or somehow gotten extra chips to buy it, but I want to do it without anything like that and just to settle my mind that I got it. Uh, by leveling up my character accordingly. So with that being said, that's all there is for this particular um, episode and review. Thanks for tuning in and supporting and subscribing to the show. And until next time.